The story begins when a deep two sons, who were supposed to rule deeps, in turn each for one year, fought and pushed each other outside the city wall. Ethiopia, the elder, refused to give way to his brother after his first year in power. Now Tips is safe. The children of our brothers are dead. Creole the king has ordered that the Ethiopians, the virtues, will be given an elaborate funeral. Polynesis, the good for nothing rebel, will be left unwed of to ravens and jackals. Anyone who tries to give him proper burial rights will be punished with death without mercy. Her name is Antigone, and she's going to have to play her part right through the end. Ever since the play started, she has spent herself in moving farther away from her sister, farther and farther away from the rest of us, who are just here to watch, and then we got to die in a few hours' time. I went to your room and I'm sorry, I'm not ready. When you feel well, I'm just a bit tired. It's because I woke up earlier. I couldn't sleep either. But you must, or it won't be so pretty in the morning. It's a comfort to me to see you being pretty. Do you remember how miserable it used to make me when I was little? I used to tie you to a tree and cut up your head. Such beautiful hair. Don't say the father. You're a man. That's right. They will kill us if you do it. Of course they will. Everyone is supposed to play. I don't want to die. You do the first thing that comes into your mind. Never mind whether it's sensible or stupid. Sometimes it's best not to think so much. I disagree. I do see Queen's point of view. He's the king. And I'm not the king and I don't. That's right. Scowl, glare, but I'm right more often than you are. At least try to understand. Understand? I want to understand. I'll do that when I'm older. If I ever have. But he's the king, Antigone. He's stronger than we are. And everyone agrees with him. I'm not listening. And I'm not going to help you. I'm not brave. Neither am I. Don't you want to leave then? I want to leave. Antigone, please. It's alright for men to die for their ideas. But you're a girl. Only a girl? The tears I've shed because of it. But you're young. You're engaged. You're beautiful. Not beautiful. Yes, in your own way. You're out of your mind. You always say that about everything I've ever done. Go back to bed, me. Will you let me talk to you again? Yes. And you all talk to me. You e te, Ismene, sorelle di Polinice, non possiamo, perché la città ci lo vieta. Delitto, tu dici. Non credo. Infrazione delle leggi dello Stato concernenti la pubblica e privata sicurezza, mediante atto commesso con perfetta coscienza. Non è questo il mio caso, fuorché per la coscienza. Sì, sono consapevole di voler dar requie al corpo di mio fratello Polinice, ma non infrango nulla se non il senso comune del giusto. Felici coloro che non provano vivendo il gusto dei mali. Non è più possibile che nascano esseri così. La storia è stata come un'onda tumultuosa che ha roso la spiaggia dell'umidità e del male. E seppure ciascuno di noi non ha compiuto il male, ci tocca confrontarci con esso. Il dolore che l'umanità prova si annida oramai nelle nostre stesse vene. You are mad, Creon. What have you done? She has to die. Don't let her die, Cleon. We all bear the scar for thousands of years. It was her choice. She wanted to die. None of us was strong enough to persuade her to leave her. I understand now. She was born to die. She may not have known it herself, but Polynesius was, on, was only an accuser. And when that accused was there more and more, she chose another. All that mattered to her was to refuse everything and to die. She's only a child, Creon. What do you want me to do? Condemn her to live? Terrible news! They just put Antigone in the cave and we tell there was Imon on his knees. He stared at his father, Creon. His eyes black with passion. Then suddenly he spat in his face and drew his sword. He looked at Creon, a look Creon could not avoid, and without a word, 
plants the third into his own valley. And laid them side by side with him. Their wash of them rested, pale, but peaceful. Few lovers after their first night. For them, it's over. But not for you, Creon. You still have something to learn. The devour of Thebes will go to all this winter, Creon. When Eurydice, the queen and your wife, heard of her son's death, she was knitting for the poor, as usual. She quietly finished her robe and laid down her needles, calmly, as she did everything. Perhaps even a bit more calmly than usual. Then she went into her room. Her mother sent the room with all the little embroidery, mats, and plush frames, and, and she cut her throat. Her too. Her full well sleep now. Good. It's been a hard day. It must be good to sleep. You are all alone now, Creon. I am. 